What you just saw was a 33 turn inverted spin that occurred in 1965 during contractor tests of the TA-4 airplane. The purpose of this film is to keep you out of this inverted spin mode by showing you the characteristics of the TA-4 during nose high, low airspeed departures. Since 1972, there have been 17 out of control losses of the A-4 series aircraft. Eight have occurred during nose high, low airspeed departures as a result of air combat maneuvering training. Five of these were in the TA-4 and three in the single seat model. As a result of these aircraft losses, the Naval Air Systems Command tasked the Naval Air Test Center to conduct nose high, low airspeed departures in the TA-4 and A-4M airplanes. We concentrated in our tests on control inputs which would normally be used intentionally or inadvertently during ACM training. We tried to key our tests to what we would expect the fleet pilot or student naval aviator to do with the aircraft in this environment. We tested two configurations, the clean airplane and two 300-gallon drop tanks loadings. Keep in mind, when viewing the cockpit sequences that follow, we had an extra zero-g restraint system installed in the test airplanes. Essentially, for the T or the M, we found no major differences in our results with the exception that the TA-4 tended to enter inverted spins from the post-stall gyrations that resulted when entering from the vertical to zero airspeed. In the TA-4, we found that up to, but not including the 90 to 100 degree cone, in other words, anywhere the pitch attitude from 60 to 80 to 85 degrees, the aircraft had a relatively mild departure with a 50 to 70 degree per second nose forward pitch rate, like this, resulting in a pendulum type maneuver with the nose pointing straight down and some various yaw and roll oscillations in the recovery. If the departure occurred from the 90 to 100 degree cone, that's purely vertical to approximately 100 degrees, we repeatedly got tail slides out of the maneuver, the airplane's actually backing down, and any aggravated control inputs would lead to the transition of the aircraft from the post-stall gyration phase into an inverted spin. At times, you'll see in the movie some 90-degree side slips, and this occurs in the post-stall gyration after the vertical entries. This side slip generates a side force on the aircraft as it's coming down on one wing and attempting to regain controlled flight. If the attitude of the aircraft is such that it generates a side slip and side force, the possibility of entering the inverted spin is quite likely. Out of 33 90 degree entries, two resulted in the incipient phase of an inverted spin. Now we weren't testing inverted spins, it's been done before with the airplane, but we did see two two-turn inverted spin entries followed by immediate recovery when proper controls were used. In the following sequences, all but the last maneuver which is in the clean loading, had two 300-gallon drop tanks. Several of the shots have cockpit sequences following the outside shots. The first sequence we see is uh, pull up to 75 to 80 degrees pitch attitude using idle power, neutral controls to zero airspeed on the top of the maneuver. One degree nose-up trim is set. Out of this maneuver, we will see the mild pitch forward, which is typical of this attitude on entry. Now he's holding neutral controls at the peak of the maneuver. There's the aircraft is now pitching over, very mild from this attitude. And you see a slight left roll uncommanded. He's at uh, slow enough airspeed that his rudder and controls are not affected. And that's it. Very mild maneuver. The next sequence is a 90 degree pitch attitude on entry, pulling it to the vertical using idle power. Optimum recovery controls were used, which are slightly aft stick, carefully held neutral aileron and rudder. Out of this maneuver, we will see a good post-stall gyration, and even though he's at idle power, we experienced a few chugs on the engine, popcorn-type compressor stalls that were very momentary. 
Okay, now you can see he's in the vertical, and I'd like you to note the edge of the camera, uh, the image of the airplane attempting to go down in the view. And that, that's the only indication you have that he's actually in a tail slide. Here you can see him trying to track vertically. Right there, he's tail sliding. Pitch over. You see it's a little bit quicker pitch rate. And he goes off on one wing. And there's a side slip of 90 degrees, and it, t it just tends to roll him a little bit, but he did not get any yaw, which is what drives you into the inverted spin. Fairly good post-all gyration there. This is the same uh, maneuver we just saw from the cockpit view. Right there, he's very carefully holding neutral controls, slightly aft longitudinal stick. There's the pitch through. You can see it's quite rapid. He's on one wing there, but it did not take off in yaw. A little bit of negative G on recovery. The next sequence is another maneuver to 90 degrees using idle power. Elevator slightly aft, aileron neutral. And at the top of the maneuver, he held in a quarter left rudder uh, down to zero airspeed. This maneuver was not typical of the whole series of vertical entries that we made because the aircraft, when it reached the apogee, went over on its back. It was very mild. There was positive G on the aircraft at all times. It was like almost like a zero airspeed loop at the top of the maneuver. But as you'll see here, okay, there's a little bit of left roll as he puts the rudder in. And it's tail sliding now. And it went over on its back. 90 degrees to the entry attitude due to the left roll from rudder. Very mild. And again, that only occurred twice in a series of 60 some odd vertical entries that we made. And that maneuver I repeated now in the movie from the cockpit viewpoint, so you can see how mild it was. Okay, I believe he's in the tail slide now. It's very difficult to tell. There's a little bit of roll, and here he comes over on his back. Absolutely no negative G experience. It was all positive G throughout the maneuver. He went through the sun there, and you could see he just came over. Did a small loop up on top of the entry there. In this next sequence, you'll see an entry pulling past the vertical intentionally to approximately 110 degrees of pitch attitude. In this sequence, military power was used, which prolongs the nose-high attitude of the aircraft. And also, the tail slide is sustained longer at mill power. Now, here he is just a little bit past the vertical. And again, watch the attempt at tracking the aircraft. Military power also makes the pitch over a little bit milder. You see some fuel venting there, and just a very slight roll. And here you see just a little bit of post all gyration with a short period of side slip in there, but it did not generate the inverted spin entry. Again, in that maneuver, everything was held neutral uh, as he entered the tail slide from the top of the entry of the maneuver. There's no cockpit sequence on that one. Next maneuver is 90 degrees. Attempt to go past the vertical again using idle power. On this one, on entry, he had 8 degrees of nose-up trim set, which caused him to actually have to hold a little bit of forward stick force to maintain the optimum neutral control position. This is to be kept in mind uh, and will be covered later on recovery controls. There he is at about 110 to 120 degrees. And he goes over on his back with a little bit of uncommanded left roll here. He's out of the vertical cone area, the 90 to 100 degree cone, so he's out of problems. And he actually went below 100 knots neutralized and let the aircraft do its thing as he went below 100 knots. In this next sequence, the pilot pulls purposely past the vertical, 120 degrees approximately with idle power, 
At the 90 degree position, he passed through approximately 175 knots and intentionally pulled through to the opposite horizon at approximately 100 knots. We did quite a few of these during the test, and this is why in the NATOPS recommendation we use the 100 knot criteria where you can go ahead and maneuver as necessary to try to get the nose to the opposite horizon or try to get the nose moving at least and recover in some other mode than the vertical tail slide. You can see he ran out of airspeed up on top. He still pulled through until he runs out of airspeed, neutralizes, and again it rolled out on its own up on top. It sort of ended up in a half Cuban 8 maneuver on the top of the vertical entry. This sequence is a 90 degree entry, idle power, elevator slightly aft. At the top of the maneuver he puts in a quarter left aileron, which is the critical control, using neutral rudder at zero airspeed on, on the top. Trim is one degree nose up. You'll see the classic forward pitch over. you see it roll off on one wing and watch for this 90 degrees of side slip. There's the tail slide pitching forward. There's the side slip. Now watch the yaw rate build up here. This one ends up in an inverted spin. There it goes. That's one and a half turns. He's got in recovery controls now. Recovery attempts to slide on one wing again and just almost enters a spin the opposite direction on the recovery controls there. And he put inverted spin recovery controls in with aileron against the turn needle after one and a half turns. And he opposed the yaw rate with rudders. In the cockpit sequence you can see the horizon go by as that yaw rate builds up and gives you an idea how quickly the entry and disorienting the entry into the inverted spin is. Still doesn't give you quite the feeling you'd get in the cockpit of being thrashed around, but just watch. There's the pitch over. He's on the right wing now, and here's the yaw rate building up. See the horizon in the lower left corner. There it goes. Now watch the negative G come on. He's way up out of his seat, about an inch and a half, and we had special restraints in our tests. Now watch his head wiggle here. This is actually a, his vestibular apparatus uh, getting back into the real world. A little anecdote. After that maneuver, he came back and landed. And uh, a little bit atypical of A4 drivers, he left his speed brakes out, his flaps down, his spoilers up, and his trim untrimmed and went right back, got out of the airplane. This next sequence occurred earlier in the program than the preceding one, and it shows you that the airplane also has a propensity for entering the inverted spin in the clean loading. The attempted entry was at uh, zero airspeed, 90 degrees, controls held neutral at idle power with one degree nose up trim. Again, he got the classic tail slide and forward pitch through. And due to the gyrations that occurred, the post-stall gyrations, the pilot was thrown about the cockpit and inadvertently held in a quarter left rudder and approximately a half right stick here. He had it cross-controlled. There's the side slip and the high yaw rate entry to the inverted spin. There he goes. After one turn, he put in recovery controls, and he's out with quite a bit of roll on the recovery. So you can see the aircraft is prone to enter the inverted mode in either double bubble or clean loading. The total altitude loss in that last maneuver you saw was 12,000 feet to a wings level attitude. Now to cover the procedures to follow, if you suddenly find yourself in the 90 to 100 degree pitch attitude with zero airspeed. If you enter this and your speed's above 100 knots, attempt to maneuver the airplane under positive G to the nearest horizon. Neutralize the controls and positively hold them neutral when airspeed decreases below 100 knots. Once the airspeed does decrease below 100 knots, in the 90 to 100 degree regime, you've suddenly found yourself on a vertical recovery and, and out of airspeed. Accept the airplane attitude and follow these procedures. One, hold and visually check controls in neutral with longitudinal sticks slightly aft. 
Now the slightly aft stick position can be determined before flight by setting the pitch trim between zero and four degrees nose up and moving the stick aft with approximately 10 pounds of pull force. An incorrect trim setting out of the zero to four degree range will cause the longitudinal stick position and your force cues to be incorrect. Two, reduce power. This is because the airplane accelerates rapidly in the vertical dive following the post stall gyration when nil power is applied. Three, check the pitch trim set between zero and four degrees nose up. An incorrect trim setting greater than six degrees or less than zero is the same as intentionally holding aft or forward longitudinal stick during recovery. The slightly aft stick position is dependent upon correct stabilizer trim setting. Four, accept the random roll and yaw oscillations associated with post-stall gyration at low airspeed. So what you've done is just, you've realized you're in that attitude, stop your, uh, neutralize your controls, let the aircraft do its thing as it pitches forward, and just accept these oscillations. Don't attempt any kind of control inputs for recovery except holding a neutral. Intentional or inadvertent control inputs will increase the magnitude of roll and yaw oscillations, prolong the departure, and could result in the inverted spin entry. Five, monitor your angle of attack, your airspeed, and your altitude. Commence the dive recovery as airspeed is increasing through 200 knots. If residual roll exists at 200 knots in your recovery, stop the roll using aileron and then commence the dive recovery.